terrorists always refer to Islam to explain what they're doing. So why is that a magician's trick? Because look, some of the Islamic jihadists say things like this. The Muslim Brotherhood, which is an international organization that is also active in the United States and a key part of the stealth jihad movement, the non-terrorist attempts to impose Islamic law, to bring Islamic law west, the Muslim Brotherhood, this is from an internal Muslim Brotherhood document, must understand that their work in America is a kind of grand jihad in eliminating and destroying Western civilization from within and sabotaging its miserable house by their hands and the hands of the believers so that it is eliminated and Allah's religion is made victorious over all other religions, which is ultimately not a religious statement at all, but a political one, because Allah's religion, as they understand it, is, has a political extension, a political manifestation that they are working to bring here. Now, when the Muslim Brotherhood said that they were engaged in a kind of grand jihad in eliminating and destroying Western civilization from within, the organization of the Islamic Conference said nothing and did nothing. And when the Muslim Brotherhood worked on that agenda, the organization of the Islamic Conference said and did nothing. However, when other people, non-Muslim anti-terror analysts and activists began to quote the Muslim Brotherhood saying that they wanted to destroy Western civilization from within, that was an act of hatred. That was hate speech. That was Islamophobia. That was bigotry and racism. That's the magician's trick that's been done here. There's a politician in the Netherlands named Heert Wilders, and he is a very heroic individual who has published a film, produced a film, called Fitna which you should look up on the internet if you have not seen it. It's 15 minutes of your life well spent. Fitna, F-I-T-N-A, and you can find it on the Jihad Watch website and elsewhere. And Fitna is a very simple film. It quotes passages of the Quran, the Muslim holy book, and then shows Muslim preachers preaching about those passages of the Quran and exhorting violence against unbelievers, and then shows Muslims blowing things up as a result of that kind of teaching. Very simple. If there's any hate speech involved in it, it is the hate preachers who are filmed in this, who are featured in Fitna, saying you have to wage war, you have to fight against the Jews and the Christians, you have to destroy them, you have to slay them wherever you find them, and so on. However, Geert Wilders was widely criticized and is actually being prosecuted now for hate speech in the Netherlands and widely criticized all over Europe and all over the world for and I'm not making this up, linking Islam with terrorism. Now, you have to th follow this very carefully. Hirt Wilders did not link Islam with terrorism. The Islamic preachers in his film linked Islam with terrorism, and he reported on it. That is a very crucial distinction. He is explaining how they link Islam with terrorism and saying that free people who believe in free speech, free people who believe that somebody who changes his religion should not be murdered as a result of that change, free people who believe that men and women ought to enjoy equality of rights before the law, free people who believe that non-Muslims ought to enjoy the same rights in a society with Muslims, they oppose those hate preachers. But look, the whole thing is designed to advance the agenda of imposing Islamic law over the West. And Islamic law forbids non-Muslims to criticize Islam on pain of death. Consider that if the OIC, the Organization of the Islamic Conference, is able successfully to shift the focus and to pretend that it's people like Hirt Wilders and others like him who are linking Islam with terrorism and that that is an act of bigotry and hatred, then what will be the result? Obviously, the result will be that people like you and me will be afraid to speak about the ways in which Islamic jihadists use Islam in order to gain recruits among peaceful Muslims, to motivate terrorists, to exhort people to commit terrorist acts, and to advance the jihad in other ways, the jihad against the West. People will be afraid to do that because they know not only will they be branded a bigot and a racist and everything else, but it could be even bring them criminal charges in the future if the OIC gets its way. And so, what has the Obama administration just done? They said, we're not going to talk about jihad. We're not going to talk about Islam. We're not going to talk even about a war on terror. Who's the victor? 
Who is the winner when that kind of thing is done? The only winner is the international attempt, the international forces, I should say, that are working to make it impossible for free people to speak about the Islamic Jihad threat. If the United States government voluntarily abdicates its responsibility to explain and understand the motives and goals of those who want to kill us, then those motives and goals will advance unimpeded. The people who believe in those motives and goals will be able to advance without scrutiny and knowing, fully confident, that their opponents in the U.S. government don't understand them, don't know why they're doing what they're doing, and have no way to stop them. Because you cannot formulate a coherent way to resist these people unless you understand what they're up to. So, what has happened in the last couple of days is actually quite momentous, much more momentous than it might have appeared in the, on the face of things. Because this is not just a matter of mere terminology or nomenclature. And it's not just a matter of strategy. Even some of the Obama administration spokesmen said, look, we just give legitimacy in the Islamic world to these Islamic groups if we say that they're jihad, because they're really, they're not legitimate jihad. It's a twisting and hijacking of the peaceful religion and so on. Well, that proceeds from two fallacies. One is that uh, the, anyone in the Islamic world understands Islam based on what the U.S. government says about it. It is inconceivable that a pious Muslim who believes in Islam will not get his understanding of Islam from Islamic authorities, but will go to non-Muslims who run the U.S. government and get this understanding from Islam from there. So it's not a strategic gain to say, we won't speak about jihad because that will give them legitimacy. There's no, never been any indication that the jihad groups gained any legitimacy from our speaking honestly about them in the first place. And also, the Islamic Jihad groups are able to point to core teachings of the Islamic religion that mandate warfare against unbelievers. And they claim for themselves the mantle of being the representatives of true and pure Islam on the basis of being able to invoke those teachings. The United States government deciding to ignore all that is not going to do anything but allow them to continue to advance without our responding to their challenge adequately because once again you cannot defeat an enemy that you do not understand. So there is in short a concerted effort to restrict the freedom of speech particularly in regard to the advance of the global jihad and that is an effort being forwarded primarily by the organization of the Islamic Conference which is the largest Muslim organiza largest organization at the UN. 57 states, if the, uh, 56 states and the Palestinians, they, uh, if they decide something and they vote together, then they can basically get what they want at the UN. And what have they done at the UN? They have actually been able to pass a resolution that said that Islamophobia ought to be criminalized and all member states of the United Nations ought to pass laws to make it a criminal offense to speak critically of Islam. Now in the first place it's outrageous because you know people criticize Christianity, people criticize Judaism, people criticize other religions all the time in the West and nobody seems to mind. But when one... <laughs> when one merely notes, when one merely happens to notice that the Islamic jihadists use the core texts and teachings of Islam to justify their actions, then suddenly this is a great act of hatred and bigotry. Well, I hope you see the sleight of hand clearly. I hope you see the magician's trick very clearly now. But our freedom of speech is in grave danger. And you can say, well, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. We have a First Amendment here. You've heard of that, right? 